given recent exchanges over the last few weeks, do you still think that Boris Johnson would make a good Prime Minister? I think Boris is a very talented politician. He was a great Mayor of London, and I've always said he's got a huge amount to give to public service and public life. I don't get to pick uh, the next Prime Minister. Um, that will be a decision made by uh, the party and by the country when the country votes. And so I'm not going to put the black spot on anyone by saying who should or shouldn't do the job, but he's a very talented guy. On this issue, we disagree. I really think we'd be making a big mistake as a country. I think we'd be shrinking our economy. I think it would have an effect on people's jobs and livelihoods that would be bad. I actually think it would diminish our country because I want us to be Great Britain. I want us to be out there trying to help fix problems that affect us back at home, whether that is uh, migration problems, whether it's climate change, whether it's fighting terrorism, whether it's trying to stop Iran getting a nuclear weapon. We are enhanced in our power and our ability to get things done by being part of this organization as we are being part of NATO or other organizations. So it's a profound disagreement. But frankly, in this debate, I think we're finding that sometimes within a family you can find disagreements. Within a community you can find disagreements. And that's why we're having a referendum. You're going to settle this issue, but I'm not going to hold back in making the arguments that I feel very, very passionately about. And I'm sure you, neither will Boris. Does that work for you, Fiona? I don't think it quite answered the question. You haven't answered the question. Before. The question was, do I think Boris should be the next Prime Minister? No, I'm saying I'm not going to... I, I've said he's been a great Mayor of London, he's got plenty of left fuel in the tank, yes, and I'll let other people decide. And that's as far as I'm going to go. Yeah. OK. Uh, James Dex. ...mentioned the Council of Ministers. Which nation has been most overruled in the Council of Ministers since you became Prime Minister? This is a totally phony statistic. Uh, which you're about to deliver, because I've read about this one. 12%. And the truth, I tell you, I tell you, I tell you why it's a phony. Let me tell you exactly why it is a phony statistic. Uh, we insist that where we disagree with a judgment, and we're on the winning side, I think, on 80% of occasions, where we disagree. Well, so that's 20%, no, no, then you're not. No, so where, where we, hang on, hang on. Where we disagree. You said it was phony. No, I'm not I answer your question. So where we disagree, lots of other countries, when they disagree, they'll say, okay. Uh, we actually often insist on voting against a register that we don't approve of a particular regulation. But look, if you're saying to me, are there regulations in Europe that annoy you? Bank yes. Bonuses, are there things, are there things about Europe that frustrate you? Yes. Look, I'm the Prime Minister who sits around the table with 27 other uh, heads of government and state, and sometimes this organisation drives me crazy. But do I sit there and think Britain would be better off if we left? You know, are we quitters? Do we think we quit the European Union, we quit the single market? and that somehow we would be better off. Absolutely not. I'll tell you what it would be like. We would be outside the room. The European Union doesn't stop existing just because we've left. The channel doesn't get any wider if we uh, decide to leave. A group of people would be sitting around a table making decisions about our biggest market, about the future of our continent, about things that affect us, and we would have our nose sort of pressed to the window trying to find out what decision they and were we making. Would have the that would be to terrible. Trade with China and India and all the growing markets and be able to do so right, without well, the shackles.